all right here. You can. Good morning again, everybody. For gathering this morning, we have a psalm to gather with. And the psalm is from Psalm 24, if you want to look it up later, 1 through 10. The earth and everything on it, the world and all who live in it, belong to Yahweh. Yahweh built it on the deep waters, laying its foundation in the ocean depths. Who has the right to ascend Yahweh's mountain? Who is allowed to enter Yahweh's holy place? Those whose hands are clean and whose hearts are pure, who do not worship idols or make false promises. Yahweh will bless them. God, their Savior, will declare them innocent. Such are the people who seek Yahweh, who seek your face, God of our ancestors, Selah. Fling wide the gates, open the ancient doors, and the glorious liberator will come in. Who is this glorious liberator? Yahweh. Yahweh strong and mighty. Yahweh, victorious in battle, fling wide the gates, open the ancient doors, and the glorious liberator will come in. Who is this glorious liberator? Yahweh, Sabaoth, glorious liberator. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, our sing-along this morning is uh, one you should know, Seek Ye First. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and of righteousness and all these things shall be added unto a special day, a tradition that we participate in here at Harmony Springs called All Saints Day, usually the Sunday after Halloween and All Saints Day. So today is it. It's a day where we gather together to remember those who are no longer with us, who have joined what the author of Hebrews calls the great cloud of witnesses. So today, uh, a bit of a somber service, but also Uh, a time to reflect and remember and give thanks for all of those in our lives whom we've loved and lost and who remain a part of us in that great cloud of witnesses. I want to invite any kids we have to come down for a second and we can chit chat. If you're here, come on down with me. Here we go.
right. Well, here's what I was thinking this morning, an activity for us to do. So uh, if you were listening just a second ago, I said today at church is a Sunday we call All Saints Day. And you'll be back with your teachers when we do some things to remember loved ones that aren't with us anymore. Uh, And I want to explain to you a little bit about what we're going to do and then invite you to uh, do the same before you go. Uh, So All Saints Day is a day that we remember people who have died, people that aren't with us physically here anymore, but we know that they're still with us in spirit and they still love us. Uh, and want the best for us. And today, I thought this. It seems like a lot of Sundays we come up here and I ask you questions, and somehow our discussion always ends up talking about pets. (laughs) I don't know how that happens uh, on a regular basis, but I know we love pets. And uh, even growing up, I remember every single dog and cat that my parents had, and I'm sure you do too. So here's the thing. Uh, This is kind of hard to think about, but it's important for us. Uh, If you have a pet that you've loved and been a part of your family and is no longer (coughs) with you, then maybe say, uh, share the name, and then we'll invite you to light a candle for them up here along with everybody else who's going to light candles. Does anybody have any any they want to? Yeah, I gave up. I don't know the name because it was one of my favorite. Sure, yeah. No problem. Was it? It was a cat. A cat? Yeah. Sure. Reed? Here, pass that. Lena, pass the mic over to you. It was a dog buster. A dog buster? Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Aislinn, you got one? Here, hold the mic up for us so we can hear. There you go. A cat. A cat. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right, how about Miss Jubilee behind you, Aislinn? Can you hand her over? My dog, Bella. Yeah, yeah, we love Bella, didn't we? <coughs> All right, how about over here? We'll pass the mic. Okay. It's not on. No, it's on. There you go. Two dogs. One is named Penny and one is named Winston. Oh, that's great. Well, we love our pets, don't you? You got one more, Reed? Fish, but I forgot what I named him because it was so long ago. Yeah, well, sometimes goldfish get get names and sometimes they don't. Huh? All right, you got one more, Miss Hazel. What do you got? Um, Peter. Okay. Okay, it's all right, no problem. Well, we I know that you all love your pets very much because we talk about them a lot up here. So I want to invite you to do what everybody else here is going to do later when you're back in class. Uh, And I'm going to take a risk and help you light a candle on behalf of the pets that you love. Yeah. All right. So let's do that. And then uh, after we light that, we can, you can head back with your teachers. Can I say a prayer for you and our pets before you go? All right. Loving and gracious God, thank you for this day and for all the people in our lives who love us and want the best for us. And thank you especially today for the pets that have become a part of our family and that uh, we love so much. Thank you for blessing us with their presence and with them. And today we give thanks for all that you do and for all the blessings you give us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. You guys can stay here and light a candle if you want just a second. Hold that. Let me light that one for you. All right. And pick one of these. Yeah, you can do one for both if you want. Do you want to do a candle also?
And uh, after I read the names, uh, then Jennifer will ring a bell. This past week, I had the opportunity to hear um, one of those uh, radio ministers, if you ever heard him on the, on the radio, flipping the channels. And it was interesting that this minister said, hear the bell ring. He says, hear this bell ring in your heart. I am with you. Hear the bell ring, he said. I am with you. I am with you, I am with you. And isn't that something that comforts us in life and in death and in the presence of, of our grief? And grief comes and goes in waves, all that you've experienced it, and all of our would-haves and should-haves and, and could-haves all come flooding in on us. But God takes care of that when we turn it over to the Lord. I am with you, I am with you, I am with you, hear the bell ring. I will read the names and then Jennifer will ring. Lord, we remember Edith Bowman. Lord, we remember Todd Smith. Lord, we remember Betsy Goschel Dorman. Lord, we remember William Graham. Lord, we remember Timothy D. Conley. Lord, we remember Marie Immel. Lord, we remember Ronald J. Connor. Lord, we remember Donald Remark. Lord, we remember Joyce M. McBriar. And Lord, we remember C. Ann Shiflet. Amen. And if you would like to at this time, Jennifer, uh, Pastor Jennifer, Pastor Joel will help you light a candle in remembrance of your loved one.
we continue our service with prayer as we um, lift up. Um, Sue Franz is in the hospital, but hoping to get out today. Um, she's doing very, very well. But we thank um, Jen Murphy for putting this together. Remember, Sue is always the one making little blankets for everybody to be prayed over. And so thank you, Jen, for making this for her. We'll pass this around and pray over it. And also, Marilyn Boland has asked for prayers for her cousin, um, Janice. And Pastor, what did they say about Janice? She's a well-known, was a well-known artist and has a painting in the Smithsonian. She's a well-known artist and has a painting in the Smithsonian, right next to mine. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we remember her in prayer. And um, most of us can't claim anything like that, so that's, that's amazing. And we do pray for her healing. Um, we continue our service uh, lifting up the world, of course, and uh, lifting up uh, All Saints Day. And uh, we're just thankful that the Lord receives us lovingly and warmly into his loving care. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all that we have and hope to have and have had. And as we watch the children light the candles for their, for their pets, we know that uh, in life and in death we belong to you and that you hold the little ones the same way you hold us. As we hear the bell ring, I am with you. Help us to remember as the seasons come and especially Thanksgiving and as Christmas comes, we remember Emmanuel, God with us. And so we do pray for the world. We pray for each person here we pray that you help us take a breath and be aware of our breathing, that we intake life, that we know that the glory around us and the glory in your heart is for us, and that if God be for us, who can be against us? That you sent your own son to be on our behalf and for all of our sins forgiveness. We thank you for forgiveness of sins and the resurrection hope. As we cling to you, Lord, praying for elections coming up. As we pray for Veterans Day this coming week. And the veterans, Lord, that we have lost. And Lord, we pray for those that are wounded and, and still with us and fighting the battle of, of, of pain. Lord, we pray for those fighting a battle of the mind with so many veterans taking their lives each day. We ask for them. We pray, Lord, for Ukraine, their constant battle, help them, and we pray for peace. We ask for those who've been damaged by tornadoes this week and those harmed by economic circumstances beyond their control and the devastation it brings for even bread on the table. We ask you, God, as you walk closer to us than than we can ever possibly know that even the hairs on our head are numbered. Help us to know for a fact that you will not leave us, that you've called us to pray and you've said to us, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and wonderful things that you've not seen before. As we lay before your throne of grace, all that is on our own hearts, all of our would'ves and should'ves and could'ves, we, we lay them down. You carry them for us, Lord, and help us to continue to turn all things over to you as we pray peace for the world and peace for our own hearts, as we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
As we prepare for Pastor Joel's message, we are reading today from Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 3. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on, it means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race that we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there, in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item. That long litany of hostility he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline into your souls. The word of God for the people of God. Sometimes we get those creative translations. The message is one that I love reading and sometimes share in church. Uh, shoot adrenaline into our souls, Lord, please. Yes. Uh, over the last couple weeks here, we've been uh, talking about this uh, theme and idea, what's next, God? And if you remember a couple weeks ago, if you've been uh, joining us the last couple weeks here at Harmony Springs, uh, we had our prayer team a while ago had some uh, colorful bracelets made that say, what's next, God, on it, and I invited you to take some. In fact, I think we gave all the ones away that we had, so uh, they are out there. And we just did so to encourage us as a church to 
pray that prayer on a daily basis if you can with us. You don't need to have a bracelet, of course, to, to pray that prayer. Uh, what's next, God, is easy enough, a three-word prayer. And at the beginning, uh, we just said, pray the prayer and then just listen. Uh, and see if the Spirit may be leading you or I or us uh, in a certain direction. And we've done all this as we're, it's the time of year where we're leading up to our annual congregational meeting together here at Harmony Springs. And we've said uh, over the last few weeks that we're a church that decides on things together congregationally. Uh, sometimes that gets exciting. Sometimes it's mundane and boring. Uh, sometimes I prefer for the second rather than the first. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it is what it is. We decide things together. And we do it annually, the big things annually, in a congregational meeting that this year will take place uh, next Sunday after church. Uh, you can stick around. Sometimes, depending on how much discussion and conversation we have, it can be shorter or longer than others. Uh, but we try to wrap it up. We put it in a place that uh, we all want to get out of here to go get lunch, uh, so we move things along more quickly, right? So uh, I say that jokingly, but uh, that's what we do. So next Sunday, stick around. Uh, if you're an official member or not, we're transparent and open as a church in how we make decisions. You're, of course, welcome to stay and participate. Uh, so we talk about the big things like how we're spending our money, what our budget looks like for next year. Uh, we take nominations for those who serve in leadership positions here at Harmony Springs, our elders and trustees, about 10 folks who uh, meet on a regular basis to discuss and uh, discern and to make decisions on our behalf uh, for the church as we continue uh, to seek what's next from God. So that gives you a little context. It's what we're working up towards. And of course, it's a time of year for us to all, I think, and for me as your pastor to remind us all that we all play an important role here at Harmony Springs. I said last week uh, and asked if you'd ever heard of the 80-20 rule where uh, in many organizations, especially nonprofit organizations, the rule of thumb for administrative leadership is that 20% of the people generally do 80% of the work. Uh, and I'm on a mission and we're on a mission to try to make that not the case here at Harmony Springs. So years ago, we sort of re-looked at how we structure ourselves and how we make decisions and how we get things done and decided to uh, sort of design ourselves in such a way that we're focused on getting things done and not just sitting around a table in a committee meeting talking about getting things done, which churches are notorious uh, for doing, aren't we? I was just talking to a friend of mine uh, this last Friday talking about past church experience and he said uh, he very not so fondly remembers sitting in a committee me two hour committee meeting for a church and then moving from that committee meeting to another committee meeting that was meeting right after uh, and spending another hour and a half in that committee meeting. Lord knows we need less long committee meetings and more opportunities to just go out there and do the work that Jesus is calling us to do. So that's what we're trying to do here at Harmony Springs. And I want to encourage you as you're praying that prayer, what's next, God, to uh, maybe pray it in a way that we might be open to how God and the Spirit may be leading us to contribute and be a part of what we're accomplishing together here at Harmony Springs. And that can be a wide variety of things. And of course, uh, there are a list of a few things at the top of the list that, of course, we need and require to be the sort of movement that we are. Uh, of course, your giving and donations to the church. We got to have the money to keep the lights on, right? So if God is telling you to make a very large gift and donation to the church, I will not argue with the spirit of God in that sense, right? Uh, also, I know we all don't have those resources and those gifts, so if it's just a time commitment, volunteering for something, we've structured ourselves here at Harmony Springs uh, in a sort of ministry team model. So we're trying to, uh, our elders and leadership, we're trying to sort of reinvigorate that. So we've got some folks who are in charge of different ministry teams that do the work, our work on behalf of us. Uh, so 
the idea is those ministry teams are out there hitting the ground uh, doing things and very little time is spent just talking about it, right? So we've got a prayer team, you know, they help put together the prayer on the property and sometimes at other people's houses like yesterday, right? Uh, yesterday morning, uh, we've put together or reinvigorating uh, a welcome hospitality team that will soon be making delicious espresso drinks back there for us, right? To uh, create an environment here at Harmony Springs where when you first come in, uh, the first thing you experience is our great sense of hospitality and welcome. It's a part of who we are and we need people to help live that out and express it. So uh, we're working on that. We have folks who do also some of the organizational stuff like uh, an HR ministry team that makes sure all of our staff have job descriptions and check in with check in with them regularly regularly say that five times fast mm -hmm. uh, to make sure they have the resources they need to get their job done right uh, that kind of thing so the list goes on and on and we've highlighted some of those like another ministry team we don't even call a ministry team it is but it isn't right uh, they go by the name AV Club and they sit in the back corner on Sunday mornings right uh, working the computers and the live stream and the audio visual and all that stuff that needs done. Uh, I give thanks for every single week when I come in that those are things I don't have to worry about. Uh, I used to have to, when we were meeting online during COVID, uh, we recorded our meetings and then I was posting them on our YouTube for folks who couldn't be there. Now Dan does that for me and I'm grateful every time I see the link posted on our collective Facebook group that says last Sunday's uh, service is online now and you can watch it on YouTube. If you have gifts, we all have experiences and talents and things we can contribute. I'm gonna say it again, that Blankenships, holy cow, uh, you came at the right time. Jim worked for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, right, doing, uh, setting up displays and that kind of thing. When you walked in here and it took you like two weeks and you started saying, uh, do you need help with your audio visual? And I said, yes, absolutely we do. And Dan said, yes, what do you wanna do and how hard do you wanna work? Uh, Jim is not only doing that on Sunday mornings, but he also came in and s installed electrical outlets in our future coffee bar back there over the last two weeks. Uh, what a professional job. He added those outlets, and then of course, uh, you know, as we do in church, Wally came to him and said, how about a couple outlets in the kitchen along this wall and on this back wall? And uh, Jim said, yeah, while I'm doing it, I'll drop them down and put them in, right? Uh, how blessed are we to have that? And although, uh, you know, even if we're not giving thousands of dollars to the church, not to say the Blankenships aren't or are or aren't, they are, but they're doing that and giving uh, in that way. So Lord, we need all of that, right? If you've got a talent or gift to do something. Uh, during COVID or right before COVID, we had this brainstorm idea to start a podcast called Harmony Springs Gives Voice. And you can go back and listen to it, although now when you're listening to it, know that it's pre-COVID and probably a lot of what we talked about doesn't even matter anymore. Uh, but we did it. And we have, lo and behold, we found out that we have members of our congregation who do podcasts on a regular basis. It may be podcasts about playing video games and other things like that, but if you know how to produce a podcast and edit it, if I know about it, which I found out about it, you know, I'm going to say, hey, Jesse, what do you think about <laughs> putting together us sitting around just talking about church and how we do church, right? Whatever it is, Lord knows we're in a place where if you've got a gift and talent that can move our mission forward here at Harmony Springs, let us know and we will put you to work. It's that simple. In fact, there's the one great thing, other great thing about Harmony Springs, and I can go on and on, there's a lot of churches you go to, like you come up with an idea or you got an idea and then you gotta like work your way up the hierarchy of people making decisions and hearing your ideas, right? And churches' uh, gears grind notoriously slow because of that, right? Not here. If you know how to make a podcast, I will say, hey, Let's make a podcast and let's get people together and start recording it and put it out there. We've tried to streamline things so that if we want to get something done, if there's an opportunity that God puts in front of us, that God says, here's what's next, guys, then we do it. 
If we hear about a need in the community, I know, I know from being your pastor for years, we're so good at this. If we hear about a need in the community, we don't have a big hierarchy and bureaucracy that says if somebody's apartment caught fire that isn't even a part of Harmony Springs, like, of course we want to help them. We throw up a Facebook fundraiser and we raise money and we share it wide and far. And before we knew it, we have raised a couple thousand dollars for a family we don't even know who lived down the street. Or if it is somebody we know, like the Eilers who decided to make s'mores last week. <laughs> Thank God you weren't in your house when your garage caught fire. Immediately, people said, what can we do, right? Electric gets turned off. If you need any frozen goods, I think it's back in the freezer back there. <laughs> it's the Eilers' frozen goods, right? <laughs> Tom Benjamin told me he uh, got the generator, the church's generator working, so if any of us lose power over the winter and we need to borrow a generator, uh, it's ready and available. And then he sent me a text yesterday and said, uh, I just got it working and we just lost power. And I said, well, <laughs> you got the materials, uh, the resources to get through, right? You see where I'm going with all this. Uh, the possibilities are endless. Here, though, is what I, the point I want to try to make today. It's All Saints Day. Of course, that's what we're talking about. But I did feel like this week that sometimes we just pause what we're talking about Sunday by Sunday. We do All Saints Day, and then we move on to it. But today, there is a little bit of an overlap, and I want to share with you a little bit about my feelings. I've been reading this book called uh, Canoeing the Mountains, and it's written by a uh, theological seminarian, uh, Fuller from Fuller Theological Seminary, and it's a book about the church and where we find ourselves, and uh, it essentially makes the case that we've been preparing for decades and decades to go on an expedition to canoe the rivers across the country, and he uses uh, this analogy of the Lewis and Clark expedition. They set out to find a waterway uh, to make it across the country, right? And they made it so far, and then they hit a point where they realized there wasn't a straight waterway all across the country. In fact, the canoes that they had brought with them sort of had to leave, be left behind because they needed to trek the Rocky Mountains. And there was no river that they could drop their canoes in. Somehow that's, it. that's a good analogy for us in the church and our lives, isn't it? Uh, and I think that's where the overlap that I've been thinking about this week comes into play. Uh, so often, if we've been a part of church, and I've said before, so many of us have found our way here because whatever churches we were previously a part of just couldn't find a way to drop their canoes and make the trek through the mountains. But here at Harmony Springs, we have realized that uh, the terrain is changing in the world around us. And the canoes we built for so many decades, although beautiful and wonderful, are not what's going to get us the rest of the way. So looking forward in the future, we're all in this boat together in a lot of ways. Uh, churches large and small are all trying to figure out what church looks like and ministry looks like uh, in a world post-COVID. The overlap that I think is interesting is uh, in our own lives. So many times, the people we love, the relationships we have, we think in our minds, in our humanity, that uh, in our sort of human understanding that things are always going to be that way, don't we? And they hardly ever are. In our humanity, in our human condition, we cling to the way things are, and uh, it's okay. I mean, it's who we are, right? Uh, loved ones that no longer are with us. We thought they would always be with us, are always with us in a certain way, and it's just not the way things are anymore. And somehow, with God's help, with God's spirit, we gotta, we gotta drop the canoes that we were traveling with in our life and realize that things are gonna be different. So today, uh, on All Saints Day, as we light these candles to remember those loved ones, I guess I want to say this, as a church and for us in our own lives, as we remember and honor those who have been a part of our lives and are no more, like, we can be grateful for what they've 
poured into us and also look forward to a future and trek forward knowing that they're just going to be with us in a different way. It's not easy. It's incredibly difficult. It's, I might say, the hardest thing that we all do in life. And yet it's the truth of how we live. It's the truth of life, isn't it? Everything is finite, and things change. And we've got to try to adapt and move forward as best we can. The one thing we can't do, unfortunately, is hold on to the way things have always been when they are not that way anymore. We've got to be willing to move forward, to let go in a lot of ways, and to embrace what's next. So this week, as I encourage you to continue praying that prayer leading up to our congregational meeting next Sunday, what's next, God, maybe listen for that. What do we need to let go of? What do we need to give thanks for? People in our lives, experiences in our lives. Maybe it's people who are still living and with us who just aren't a part of our lives in whatever way. Relationships move on and move forward. It happens. So we pray, what's next, God? May God show us uh, the things we got to leave behind and just drop for a while so that we can experience what the Spirit has to show us in the days ahead, months ahead, and years ahead in our lives. May it be so for you. May it be so for us as we pray that prayer together. What's next, God? Amen. Amen. Before we go to communion, I was um, wanted to share with you something. It, it seems sort of light, but it was really powerful. Uh, I was going into the, the post office the other day, and a woman that was um, somewhat disabled, uh, walking with a walker, about to come out the door. I was so happy that I could run and open that door for her. And uh, she was coming out when I said, you got an answer to prayer just now. She smiled at me and she said, so did you. <laughs> I was like, what? She said, you got to help somebody. Mm. We're going to help somebody and help this congregation and the people here and around the world. We're all connected, aren't we? God helps us, even as we remember in this communion Sunday, the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, broken for you. This he said do in remembrance of me. In the same way after dinner, Christ took a cup and poured it out for them, his disciples, and told them as he does us that as often as we drink of this cup and eat of this bread, we do so in remembrance of Christ. Today, as we invite you in a few moments to come forward and to receive this communion again, we acknowledge the candles lit here today on the communion table represent so many of our friends and neighbors and loved ones who also join us here today, not just today, but each week. Whether the candles are here or not, they are a part of the great cloud of witnesses, the saints above who also eat with us and drink with us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On this special day, if you will please stand if you are able. We stand before you now, O oh God, in the company of all your saints who have gone before us those made holy through the cross of Christ. We stand before you now, O God, in the company of all those saints, some we loved well, others we never knew, some suffered terribly, and others triumphed gloriously, all being purified by the holiness of your presence. Come, Holy Spirit, give us every gift we need to take our place in this 
in that broken band of saints. Inspire us by the faith of those gone on before. Let us show the way for those who are yet to come. We stand before you, O God, at the feast you have prepared for us. Through Christ the Lamb, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we invite you to come forward and to join these saints at the table Christ has set. Would you come? Take it and be blessed. Well, my friends, it's been good to be with you. As we bring things to a close, we want to highlight a few things that you may want to put on your calendars and be a part of over the next couple weeks and month while I'm thinking about it. And uh, Kevin, if you want to start making your way up, I know you have an announcement, but uh, the song and the picture made me think that uh, we are going to attempt to do again this year a solstice, winter solstice bonfire. The solstice is on December 21st, so mark that uh, on your calendar. Uh, I think it's like 6 o'clock, 6.30 or so we'll start, and we'll use our new fire pit out here and maybe have some good food and drinks. And So put that on your calendar, uh, December 21st. All right. Kevin has an announcement, of course, about... The <laughs> light dinner. Uh, so once again, it is next weekend. 
on the 12th at 7 p.m. Uh, and they're actually going to tell you a bit about it. In the back after church today, we are selling tickets for entry for the spaghetti dinner and the other things that are going on at the event. At the event, there will be a couple information booths, which include the health department, Intellite, and Keys to Serenity. And uh, we were up very late last night, uh, making hundreds of buttons that will be available um, for us to wear after the event and pass out to uh, family, friends, and loved ones. Um, so please be there. I think it'll be nice, uh, and I'll look forward to seeing all of you. Yeah, if you are unavailable to attend, uh, we will, of course, take donations for Into Light. Uh, and you can just go to intolightproject.org, uh, or, or and uh, there's a place there that you can make a donation. Just be more information, though, there. To make a donation, don't do it the way you do on the screen, so that way you can see the total that mm. we created from the donors. That works, too. You can too. buy tickets at the door. Yeah, you can buy tickets at the door. Kevin... <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, so Kevin hosted our first uh, here at Harmony Springs in this building youth walk-in last night, and they were up till two or three in the morning, depending on how you figure it with the time change. Uh, and I think he's ready to go to bed. And so. before that, I was in like eight-hour regional conference meeting. <laughs> yeah. Kevin spent uh, eight hours in a committee meeting before that, so I'm sure you're tired and ready to. Uh, be done. So thank you for having so much fun with the kids. We loved seeing the pictures last night. So thank you. Appreciate it, Kevin. John? I encourage anybody who's had difficulty in hearing <laughs> in my old 93 old years can hear every word that was in the service today. I recommend you give it a try. They're back there on, under the uh, there you go. monitor. They will be <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, one, a couple, maybe more things will come to my mind, but one thing I wanted to highlight also is, of course, next Sunday, we've said, is the congregational meeting. Stick around after. But we also have some more folks who have uh, decided to officially become members here at Harmony Springs. So we're going to also do that next Sunday. When we do that, we call it uh, Co-Cultivate Sunday because we are cultivators here of hope and love. Becoming a co-cultivator is being an official member, and it just involves coming forward during the service and to committing yourselves once again. Many of us, if we're here, we already are committed, but officially committed to... Uh, our mission and our movement here at Harmony Springs. So if you're interested in that and haven't already talked to me, uh, shoot me an email, uh, minister at harmonysprings.org, and I'd be happy to meet with you and answer any questions you have. Uh, and like I said last week, there's no hidden curtain that we're like pulling back here at Harmony Springs. Like what you see is what you get here. Uh, so you're not going to officially become a member and then realize you've gotten yourself into things too deep than you, deeper than you expected. So. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at that and to really consider it. All right. I think we're going anything we need to say anything about music or bell choir or choir rehearsal. I was gonna say you may be if you become a member, you may be asked to sing in the choir. Uh, you can do that before. Or, or just yeah, come up and anytime. sing a solo here and there. That would be yes, great. That's right. Anything to, you know, provide something more than this old guy singing all oh, the time. Oh come on. <laughs> all right. Choir all right. rehearsal after service today. Yes. Very good. Well, my friends, uh, thank you for being a part of this All Saints Day celebration here at Harmony Springs. And I pray for you and for us as we leave that the people we're remembering and honoring in our lives, that we just continue to keep them deep in our hearts and to let their spirit speak to us as we leave this place and go about our lives. May it be so, God willing. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you.